This episode of Hunting in the Sticks is brought to you by Kansas 811. Always call before you dig. This week on Hunting in the Sticks. In Kentucky, we are fortunate enough that our archery season comes in really early in September. I had to have a pretty nasty wrist surgery. Open a weekend in Kentucky's a wrap. So guess what that means? Westward ho! <laughs> Good lord, here we go again. So this is the closest thing we've seen to looking like an elk since we've been here. We are heading to Wyoming to get some extra days mule deer hunting. It is awesome to be here in Wyoming and see our first mature animal. There's a fine balance between work family, and the outdoors. We do what we have to in order to do what we love. It's not always easy, but it's always fun. God, I hope I got that deer. Yeah. That shot must have worked. It cracked him right down. There he is. That's a good one. Hello, my name is Mark Stowe, and welcome to this week's episode of Hunting in the Sticks. When it comes to adventure, our hit squad is always up for the challenge. And this week, you're gonna see just that. We are gonna kick off the beginning of our fall like we always do, by hunting the opening of Kentucky's bow season, and then heading west in search of mule deer and elk. In Kentucky, we are fortunate enough that our archery season comes in really early in September. And in my personal opinion, that is the best time to harvest a mature animal. But the key to everything is to get out early in the summer months and really do your homework. Early July here in Kentucky, and we worked on food plots and hanging tree stands and mineral licks and putting out cameras all day yesterday in the 95 degree heat. Another day in 95 degree heat here today. We're gonna work all day again today. Mark Porter drove up from Tennessee helping us. Hopefully all this will pay off come September. It's about 10 days till deer season, and as you can see, still got the old crossbow. Uh, had to have a pretty nasty wrist surgery. Doctor said probably March or April of next year before I'll be able to pull my bow back again. So the main focus right now is Kentucky deer season and getting a velvet buck. It doesn't matter if you have a new or old weapon. You need to practice religiously before you get into the field. Perfect. Now that I got all my equipment squared away, I have one more thing left to do on my preseason checklist. We're down here at uh, one of my farms watching this big soybean field. Deer season's just a couple days away, and we've been seeing these two big bucks out in this field. One we named Goliath, the other one we named Dodger. And Dodger is a buck that I would really like to shoot. He's a four and a half, five and a half year old deer. We called him Dodger because he has dodged every trail camera I have on this farm. But I come down here and see him almost every single night in the soybean field, so just goes to show you, just because they're not on your trail cameras, don't mean they ain't there. Got about 10 more minutes of shooting light probably, so if they do what they did today, tomorrow, we should be golden. You quit putting your hand in there. This field last night had several good bucks come out in it. Fingers crossed. Uh, me and Hunter just got done doing our first face paint jobs of the year. And if I do say so myself, we look pretty awesome right now. No sooner than we get our face paint on, here comes this nasty storm rolling in out of nowhere. That wind is so strong, we can't even hear each other talk but then Mother Nature gave us a pleasant surprise. That storm blew right on through, and this crazy weather might be just what we need to get the big bucks up on their feet.
Hunting in the Sticks is brought to you by 811. Know what's below. Call before you dig. Steady Form. Solar Bat. Ramcat Broadheads. And Denali Rods. We would also like to thank these 811 partners. Ricky Mills has put in his time and laid the groundwork for Kentucky's bow season. After a near disaster with weather in the stand on opening day, he was awarded a shot at his number one hit list buck. Okay, I just went down and grabbed the arrow. The arrow was blood soaked and I think I made a really good shot. I went back and looked at the footage. It looks like it was a perfect shot and he did not run past this ditch out here. so. He's gotta be laying in that ditch. We're gonna get down out of this tree, and walk over the ditch, and hopefully, hopefully Dodger's laying over there. Found him. Holy crap. Oh. <laughs> this mass is gonna get him right here. He's thick. What can I say? Opening day here in Kentucky season, and I'm done already. Got a beautiful velvet buck that we named Dodger. I mean, I can't thank Hunter enough for going out and filming and helping me get this big boy. And it actually came a pretty good thunderstorm, lightning, rained. Hunter wanted to go home at one time, and luckily we didn't. Man, this guy, he just, he came out, walked straight over, 35 yard shot, Ramcat, hit perfect, didn't go 100 yards, fell over. Just storybook exactly the way I planned it. Open a weekend in Kentucky's a wrap. So guess what that means? Westward Ho! We're going to Colorado for seven days chasing elk. Then we're gonna pack everything up, head north to Wyoming, and get after some mule deer. Two days before we leave on our two week trip out to Colorado and Wyoming, I haven't even started to pack yet. I've got all my camping gear, taking inventory of all my gear out here, trying to get everything packed up. Being gone two weeks and roughing it on doing it yourself, you gotta prepare, so I'm going through everything, spending half a day. As you can see, I've got a mountain stuff I've gotta condense down to just a small portion, because we only have so much truck space with all this gas going. It's a good thing I started packing two days ago, because we're leaving in an hour, and I'm just now wrapping up my packing. Okay, I've got all my stuff packed in the truck, waiting on uh, Ricky, Hunter, and Jason to arrive so we can load up and get this bus on the road. As usual, we're running about an hour late. We have to stop at Cabela's to buy Hunter all new gear because Jimmy lost the tote on the way. Uh, him and Austin left last night and somewhere along the way, he says it got stolen, but I'm sure it just fell out of the back because of the way he had everything stacked in there. Man, look at all your new gear. <laughs> I don't know how to go buy a whole bunch of new gear. Is your brother just an idiot or what? Come on. Jimmy oh my God. No underwear, no nothing, right? Nothing. You're gonna really go rugged. I've been eating beans for three days straight, getting prepared for this trip, and these guys, Love me. If that camera only had a nose. Speaking of that, I think the only thing malfunctioning is your body. <laughs> oh, God, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Watch when I tease it. It looks like you don't have to, trust me. Holy hell. So Ricky does not understand the concepts of the... Another roundabout. He doesn't understand the concepts of these roundabouts. Here comes another one. He doesn't get it. He just pulled out in front of me. Thank God we're almost there, because I really do not know how much longer I can be in the car with these guys. We have our elk tags, we're ready to roll. And let me tell you, it's not cheap to hunt elk in Colorado. Enough said. <laughs> it's starting oh, already. It's no. starting already. <laughs> Good Lord, here we go again. First bad idea was not strapping down your gear. 
second, what was our second bad idea? We had bring something. Bring it to me. Yeah, bring in Jason's bring in Jason. second bad idea. Third idea was buying these big ice bags and not putting them in the cooler because it was the equipment was buried under it. So we just set it on top of everything. Well, we know we'd be driving around for two hours. And uh, now it looked like everything has rained on all our equipment. What do you got here, Ricky? I got wet clothes, bro. This is awesome. You know, you gotta have something like this to start off your trip because that kind of sets the mood. Now everybody's gonna be hungry and after. Now it's time for your 811 Know What's Below Call Before You Dig viewer clip of the week. This week's clip was sent in by Connor Beard. I shot my first buck ever. It just happened to be in my bow. I couldn't find any blood. So we are gonna back out and come back in in the morning in daylight hours and try and find him. Oh, there he is! That's my first bow kill ever, and it's a buck. Couldn't be any happier right now. Thanks for sending that in. Folks, if you'd like to see your video up here on this show, go to huntinginthesticks.com and follow the instructions. The fall hunting season came out of the gates with a hot start for Ricky Mills in Kentucky. After harvesting a velvet giant on opening day, though, the good fortune quickly took a turn south. Oh, that is so con <laughs> That ice pack must have been right on your stuff. We have our tent set up. These anxious younger guys have already ventured out. They took the truck. They're going to the back side of the farm. Jason and I are going to hunt a wallow area on the front side here. But when we get back, we're going to have all our camp art. Yeah, set. we're ready. I think you're supposed to do that before you go. Well, I, I don't know. So yeah. let's get all our hunting gear on now that our camp set up. And uh, let's get the group uh, Let's do it, man. It's cold up here already. We got our sweatshirts on for the first time since back in wintertime. But just a beautiful sight up here. We're gonna hunt on the side of this mountain. There's a wallow down here. We're gonna go down here and try to find it and just sit and watch it till dark. We have three hunters on this trip, each with their own cameraman. So we're hoping by splitting up, it's gonna increase our chances for one of us getting on an elk. There's a bull. That's what it sounds like when that was running away. What happened? I have no idea. Well, that pretty much sums up the first evening. Nothing, nothing, and one group of spooked elk. At least somebody saw some elk. Let's hope that's a positive sign for tomorrow. to say something profound, I profoundly think that I'm not so sure if there are any elk in this area. three days now and uh, we've seen one mule deer, no elk. So this is the closest thing we've seen to looking like an elk since we've been here. This elk of piece of pine. We're struggling, man, we're struggling. We are heading to Wyoming to get some extra days mule deer hunting. Jimmy is gonna stay here. He's our last chance to get an elk. Jimmy, how long are you gonna stay here and hunt for these elk? Hopefully a day and a half, and then I gotta go back to work. So let me sum up how the rest of Jimmy's elk hunt went. Cue the crickets. Colorado elk hunt, a big fat zero. Let's head to the second leg of the hunt in Wyoming. Now it's time for your safe digging moment of the week. 
Brought to you by the legendary 811 bike. The Hit Squad is in Colorado elk hunting on the first leg of their Western adventure. Unfortunately, this part of the trip has been nothing short of miserable. After hiking miles on end with no signs of any elk, they've decided to pull the plug early and head to Wyoming to get extra time mule deer hunting. It's 2.30 in the morning. We just arrived in Wyoming. And as you see, we're in our camping area here. And we're gonna be getting up in about three hours to go meet our buddy, John, to go get the lay of the land. I'm tripping over stuff. We got so much crap here. Hunter's got the right idea. Just gonna film so he don't have to help put up the tent. It's like that game in gym class. All right, all right, already. This is how these guys act. You get slap happy when it's 2.30 in the morning and you're setting up camp. We finally got our camp set up, just in time to grab a couple hours of sleep. Well, now it's time to get up, go meet our good buddy, the landowner, John Reilly, and he's gonna drive us around and show us the boundaries and the layout of the land. It just runs up the, up the side of it yeah. and over the top, so. Now, you wanna talk about a good looking hunting area? John's ranch looks like a muley mecca. It runs up this, I mean, you're camping on this creek. Right. Is land, John? Oh, sure. Man, we are pumped but we just need to settle down, get these bows sighted in before we head out to the field. Anytime you travel like this, you need to double check your equipment before hitting the field. It is not worth wounding an animal. Hey, let's go kill one. Slow it up, we can get all of our gear together over there. First day of the hunt, I've already seen a ton of antelope and a lot of mule deer. Mule, and, mule and deer does. All does though, but they're in the area. We've already seen more game here in one hour than we've seen in four days in Colorado. Sighted our bows in earlier. Everybody's bows and crossbows are on the money. So the only excuse to miss them is operator error, it's not equipment malfunctions. just got to this spot getting ready to start glassing and before we even get to where we're going we look up and there's a big buck standing in the wide open just feeding. After being in Colorado for four days and seeing nothing it is awesome to be here in Wyoming and see our first mature animal. Heck we're gonna go try to shoot this guy he's a nice one straight down. This deer's been bedded for hours. We're losing light fast, the sun's setting. I just don't know what to do here. Maybe move around a little bit, make some natural noises, do something to get this deer to stand up. Now it's all on me to seal the deal on this giant. B-52 
sure to tune in next week as you're not going to believe how this story ends. Thanks again for joining us this week on Hunting in the Sticks. And as always, safe digging is no accident. Call 811 before you dig. Hunting in the Sticks is brought to you by 811. Know what's below. Call before you dig. Steady form. Solar bat. Ramcat broadheads. And Denali rods. We would also like to thank these 811 partners. Closed captioning is brought to you by Vectron. Live smart. Abby had his one sexy thing you got there. Yeah, man. When it comes to a challenge, our hits team is always. Thank God we're almost there because I don't know how much more I can take of the smells and Ricky not knowing how to drive.